and swells up almost like rising bread. This hole in the sperm head's covering is the first indication that it is about to rupture and release its precious genetic material. Here, the first strand of genes is making its way out of the sperm into the egg. The genetic material continues to spill out from the sperm head. Its tightly packed molecules contain the father's hereditary message. They almost seem to have been dispersed by an explosive force. This is an extreme close-up of the genetic material itself. The magnification on the television screen is over half a million times. The genetic material of the mother's egg and the father's sperm combine. Two cells have joined to make a single new cell. And within 24 hours, that new cell begins to divide. These early cell divisions of the human embryo have never before been filmed. egg now has two nuclei, the small indentations at the center of the cell. The first division of the egg, now there are two identical cells, still within the same nourishing material of the original egg. No growth has occurred, but rather a distinction between cells. Once it has begun to divide, the fertilized egg is called a zygote. Now there are four cells at a pace, but there's little opportunity for the new cells to grow before they divide again. of cells in the zygote is smaller than the one before it. divides, it moves along the tube toward the uterus. Now it has become a dense, compact cluster of many cells. And after five days, it is called a blastocyst. It is still no bigger than the original egg. Its center is filled with liquid. Within 10 days of fertilization, the blastocyst implants itself firmly in the lining of the uterus. Already, the mother's hormones are directing changes in her body to prepare it to support the growing embryo. Barely visible to the naked eye, the embryo will be nourished by the lining of the uterus and then by the placenta. After two weeks, the embryo is elongated. It is barely one-tenth of an inch long. At the top, what will become its head and brain? at the tail, the embryo is firmly attached to the placenta 
which will nourish it. At four weeks, the embryo has arm buds and is distinctly curled. It has the beginning of eyes. begins to take shape. At six weeks, leg buds are apparent. The embryo is less than half an inch long. It floats inside the fluid-filled amniotic sac. Its spine is clearly visible. At seven weeks, the embryo is three quarters of an inch long. of the feet are clearly visible. At about 10 weeks, the embryo is considered a fetus. It can move actively. There is a suggestion of an ear. It is two inches long, and it still has the stump of a tail. weeks, it is two and a half inches long. At 12 weeks, three inches long. Here, the umbilical cord, connecting the fetus to its food supply. By 14 weeks, it can bring its hands together and suck its thumb. The sensory organs are nearly completely formed. And by 16 weeks, it is actively turning inside the mother. This fetus is 18 weeks old. It is five and a half inches long and is here shown 15 times larger than its actual size. Its mouth and lips are fully formed, and it has the strange nasal plugs whose purpose is not yet understood. The eyes of the fetus are closed, but it can see. is made by the fetus as it breathes in the amniotic fluid in what is known as fetal respiration. It brings the fluid in through its mouth and then breathes it out again. is link to its source of life, the mother. Here are the fetus's sex organs. All its important physiological systems have developed, but it will be at least another eight weeks before the fetus has even a remote chance of surviving outside its mother's womb. signals the beginning of birth is still a mystery but when the fetus is ready to be born the